Hey YouTube, it's your boy Kenrick here, aka The Optometry Prodigy, and I'm coming at you this week with another video. Um, thank you guys for the support on the channel once again. We are at 91 subscribers. Hopefully when I put up the video next week, we'll be at 100 subscribers. Don't forget also the Instagram and the Facebook um, accounts. We can go there as well, follow, leave a like. Um, I'll also be sharing content there as well. So guys, once again, thank you for the support. And without further ado, let's go into today's, or rather this week's video. And so guys, today we're gonna have a look at the spectacle frame and lens materials. And this will be covered under the topic of dispensing. And I know usually this is really an optician feel or optical assistance feel. However, I think it is important for the optometrist to know as well, because you know, sometimes we would, um, open practices etc you would need to teach your staff this information sometimes you as well maybe may need to help them on the arm um, floor as well the optical stores so it's good information to know as well so it's still um some of the more basic subjects but as i mentioned in other videos we'll start off more with the basic stuff and we'll build on it as we go along so we're going to look at the advantages and the disadvantages of these lens and um, free materials and then I'm also going to give you a tip on the utilization of the material, whether it's frame or lens. And then we'll just do two simple cases in the end to show you how it will work in our um, optical environment as well. So spectacle and frame materials. We have the plastics, we have the metals. We also know we would have other things, you know, um, wood and all these other, other materials, but they are not so much popular. So I'll stick to plastic and material and we're going to do cellulose nitrate, cellulose acetate, cellulose propionate, polyamide optyl, nitrate, I'm um, sorry, nylon, um, and carbon fiber. For the metals, we will look at gold filled materials, gold plated, stainless steel, nickel silver, monel, aluminum, and titanium. So let's look, first, let's look firstly at cellulose nitrate. Firstly, the advantages and then the disadvantages. Cellulose nitrate, it's, it, it has a shine, it's, it's a tough um, material as well. However, the disadvantage it, that is that it will turn yellow with age and it is also highly flammable. So actually this material, we don't use it as much. It possibly may be used still in um, third world countries, etc. But because of the high flammability, most um, countries have prohibited the use of um, cellulose nitrate in the frame material. Now let's look at cellulose acetate. Um, xylonite is simply one of the um, brand forms of it. Let's look at the advantages. It is lightweight, low flammability, um, easily polished, easily repaired. There are a lot of color options. It is hypoallergenic. Um, it is also cost effective in terms of its production. How about the disadvantages? When it is overheated, it will blister the material. Um, it also brittles with age and it can be damaged by some solvents as well as chemicals. But the tip with this is that the colors, um, you can get that rainbow style, you can play up with the colors a lot in this. So those who are really into the whole cosmetic aspect of it, um, this is an area that people like to play with the colors with as well. You'll get a wide variation in terms of cellulose acetate frames and color. How about cellulose? propionate um, the advantages of this similar to cellulose um, acetate it is lightweight low flammability easily polished cost effective hyperallergenic as well disadvantages it um, the color can be buffed off it blisters when it is overheated and it does also it also brittles with age and it can be damaged by solvents and chemicals once again however it is thinner and lighter than most plastics so it's still a great option polyamide now the advantages it's a hard material lightweight hypoallergenic low flammability disadvantages it cannot be repaired it also shrinks if it is overheated so it's usually a good option still because it's thin and lighter than most plastics similar to the cellulose propionate how about optile um, optile the advantages it's a memory material this simply means um if it is deformed in any manner if it if it is heated it will go back to its original form so it's a great um unique um, aspect of the material 
it has better durability than most of the materials it's lightweight hypoallergenic and has low flammability the disadvantages however it will lose its adjustments if it is heated and it also cannot be repaired so as you can see the memory can also be an advantage in certain cases but in other cases it can also be a disadvantage so the tip for this it will last for a long while why because of its memory ability and it's also it because of its durability how about nylon advantages it's a tough material it's flexible low flammability it is heat and cold resistant however the disadvantages is that adjustments are difficult to make with the material the surface quality of the material itself is also poor however it's one of the best option for kids because of the tough material and its flexibility also it's one of the cheaper ones so it's a great option for kids as well carbon fiber advantages it's a tough material it has shape retention once a force is applied and it's removed it should go back to its normal shape it has low in, um, flammability it's lightweight the disadvantages it's brittle it, the adjustments are difficult to make and the colors are usually opaque um, it doesn't usually have transparent colors when it comes to the carbon fiber however the thing about this it will give you that classic style as you can see with this frame here most of these frames will be a kind of um, a classic effect how about the metals now gold filled materials the advantages are they are durable they are easily repaired and adjusted um, they are also perspiration resistant and lightweight the con of this it is expensive at the end of the day we are dealing with gold here but the tip it will give you that high quality that high end look it's gold you will get the high quality how about gold plated it's cheaper than the gold um, gold filled it's durable easily repaired and adjusted it's also lightweight it is more susceptible to corrosion however in terms of its disadvantages but at the end of the day it will give you that high quality look for less as you can see with the frame there as well how about stainless steel the advantages are they are durable they are easily adjusted perspiration resistant hypoallergenic um, lightweight and there are also a range of color options because of the type of material the cons however it is relatively heavy and it is also expensive and it cannot be repaired the tip for this it is useful for those who are allergic to nickel because it's a material that does not have nickel in it um, in its composition How about nickel silver the advantages cost effective in production easily repaired it's a rigid material but as i mentioned just a while ago a large population of the people are allergic to this around 10 to 20 percent of populations will be allergic to nickel so there are other better there are other um, better options available how about monel the advantages corrosion resistant that's a great um perk right there easily repaired and adjusted however a large population of people will be allergic because monel has um, a large composition of nickel in it so people have that allergic reaction whether it's a rash or etc um, as I said before there are other better options how about aluminum the advantages are they are lightweight they are strain resistant strong and they have various color options in terms of aluminum however it is difficult to adjust but at the end of the day aluminum like gold etc it gives that high-end look most of the styles will give you that high quality high-end look how about titanium this should be the last of the metals for um, frames the advantages it is light corrosion and perspiration resistant durable it is easily adjusted and hypoallergenic however it is one of the most expensive and it cannot be repaired easily titanium is one of the best um, materials in terms of uh, in terms of frames so if um, you want one of the best options titanium is the way to go and let's look at the spectacle lens materials now and simple things to note in this um, you need to remember things like the RB value of a um, material if the RB value is low the higher the chromatic aberration if the RB value is high the lower the chromatic aberration um, don't forget refractive index of the lens is also important in these cases 
let's jump right into it so we have plastic and we have the glass as well so in plastic we're going to look at colombian resin um 39 and also known as cr39 we have polycarbonate we have the trivex high index plastics as well for glass we're going to look at ophthalmic crown flint glass barium crown glass and high index glass so cr39 and the refractive index is 1.498 and the advantages of the cr39 is it is resistant to solvents and chemicals the lighter it is lighter rather and less prone to fogging than the glass materials it is fairly impact resistant it's cost effective in its production and it has a range of color options because it, it can be tinted easily however the disadvantages are it's thicker than the glass it is easy to scratch and the optics of the cr39 is actually inferior to glass how about the polycarbonate now 1.590 in terms of refractive index the advantages it is impact resistant lightweight easily tinted it absorbs some amount of uv light however the disadvantages are it is it has a high amount of chromatic dispersion and it is difficult to mold so in this case how it states that it has a high amount of chromatic dispersion that means that the abbey value for polycarbonate will be low trivex 1.523 the advantages it has great optics the edges can be polished it is also scratch resistant however the disadvantages it's more um of the it's more one of the expensive materials um the edges tend to be thicker in the trifex how about the high index plastics we are talking refractive index of 1.640 and above the advantages are that they are lightweight they are thinner and they are impact resistant but like some of the other plastics they have more chromatic dispersions let's look at the glass now ophthalmic crown 1.523 the advantages are they are low cost scratch resistant good optical quality and a low amount of chromatic aberration so we already seen the opposites here in terms of the glass and the plastics however let's look at the cons low impact resistance it is heavier than the um plastics and it also chips easily during edging how about the flint glass 1.649 that's a high refractive index there um, let's look at the advantages it is used mostly for the bifocal segments and the disadvantages are they are higher in terms of chromatic um, dispersion in the glass line of um, materials how about barium crown glass 1.619 in this case we have a high refractive index however the increase in chromatic dispersion doesn't really occur but when you compare chromat um, crown glass and barium crown glass there's more chromatic dispersion in the barium crown glass high index glass 1.64 and above the advantages are they are useful for high prescriptions um, they are thinner and they are usually lighter disadvantages however they have increased chromatic dispersion they um, have more internal reflections and they're also usually more expensive and let's just look at two cases now to help you understand the applications in terms of um, using it in optical environments etc so we have a 31 year old female she presents for um, a routine eye examination with no symptomatic complaints however she uses the computer a lot on her job and she has a prescription of minus 350 minus um, 0.5 at 180 in the right eye and in the left eye we have minus 3 minus 175 at 90. so what frame and lens material will you choose and why so if you want you can pause the video here and you can just think about it and you can play it back after so i'm going to go right into it so i just put these down to show you the options but at the end of the day they're unlimited options but it's just to sort out to see which one may be the best so i put i placed here cellulose acetate and high index glass let's look at cellulose acetate for a moment if we can recall cellulose acetate um, there's a wide range of colors you can get with it it's very fashionable and cosmetic so a 31 year old female she might possibly still be aware you know of that cosmetics and how it looks and all of that so that'll be a great material she has a variation of um 
choices she can um, get there. The high index class in particular will be chosen because of her um, prescription, which is moderate to high prescription there. So it'll be good for the optics. And I just put Trivex option here in question mark because let's say we use the Trivex, which is a plastic with a high refractive index. However, we have to remember that Trivex is thicker on the edges. And as we, as we know, minus lenses with her prescription is already thick on the edges. So that's going to be even more thickness. So the bevel of her um, spec spectacle frame, you may see the thickness of the lens there. So we may want to stay away from the Trivex option in this case. How about stainless steel and a high index plastic? This could work as well. Stainless steel, as we know, it can give you a lot of different colors, etc. And it's a um, good style to have as well. How, and the high index plastic, as we know, plastic is thicker than the glass. However, the index might be good for the prescription, but it's also another option that we may not go into because at the end of the day, the plastics are thicker than the glass. So glass will always be uh, a better option. The anti-reflective coating and the blue blockers we'll talk more about this in the future but it will be a good thing to add in here because anti-reflective coating will be needed because her prescriptions are high the lenses are going to be thicker therefore meaning more um, internal reflections so that will help to cancel with that also she uses the computer a lot so anti-reflective coating a good option with the blue blocker so now we have an eight year old boy he presents for his first eye examination the prescription acquired was plus 150 minus 075 at 8, 180 in the right eye and in the left eye plus 1 minus 075 at 180. What frame and materials will you choose and why? So again you can take a pause here and then play the video after. Think about it. I'm going to go straight into it. So nylon and polycarbonate. Why nylon? As I mentioned before nylon is one of those materials that, that is a little more um, robust or rigid or durable it is also one of the materials that is flexible so it's better for the kids he's an eight-year-old boy the polycarbonate as well is impact resistant um, it's a very good plastic um, that you would usually give to the kids as well because of that um, protection and safety aspect also the durability of it you won't really give glass or so to a child um, for his prescription because you know they may fall and um, be playing etc and that glass if it's low impact with um, if it's impact resistance is low it can shatter and then therefore the splinters could go into the eyes and we don't want that happening how about the anti-reflective coating why do we have that there polycarbonate um as i mentioned before it's abbey value is low therefore the chromatic dispersion in the lens will be um increased so an anti-reflective coating here would be great to have on a polycarbonate lens and guys that's it for this week's video if you understood the material leave a like comment share it with someone um that you think may need the information as well um you guys be safe i am out peace